I'd like to today on the 15th of June 2021 um, follow on on the lightning talk that we had earlier in the year from Max um, when he just um, introduced us to AutoKey, which is a software where he can just automate workflows, um, write scripts, and also text. And um, I just wanted to introduce you to a couple of other options to AutoKey. Because I started out using AutoKey as well on um, Ubuntu a few years ago. It's a really brilliant program. However, once I upgraded to Ubuntu 16.04, and then 18.04, and then 20.04, unfortunately, it somehow did not want to work anymore. And so there was a forum post somewhere saying, OK, RAM resources and all of that. And me not being a developer, I thought, ha, huh, I can't resolve that on my own. Our desktop support is hopelessly um, overfilled with lots of way more important requests than me not wanting to type too much. And therefore, I was looking for alternatives. And so an alternative I found was TextPander. And so what TextPander does is it gives you, as you can see, use a, a keyboard combination to pull up this um, menu where you have all your shortcuts um, that you want to have. And so what I can then just say is I want to have my signature. And I can just say, cheers, Christina. It doesn't really work so well in, in the terminal. So let me just go into a normal document. So if I want to just say, sign my name, because I always misspell my name, I can just have my signature here. Or sometimes I really need to communicate with people in the US. Here's my American signature. Do that in Thunderbird or any other program, and you have to remember so many different shortcuts, it's, it's hopeless. And all I need to do is just really remember what I started out with, and I can have a longer signature as well. So much, much easier. An alternative to this now is another software that I came across because once I upgraded to Ubuntu 2004, suddenly TextPanda didn't want to work. <laughs> Clearly, as you can see, it, it started working again. I don't know why, but suddenly it's working fine. But in the meantime, I found Espanzo. And what Espanzo does is you type, let me go up here, you type a character, and then you decide what you want to type. And that is um, where you just type in a word or an abbreviation, and it comes up with it. And so no matter whether I use TextPanda or um, Espanso, I can type entire emails. I'm a non-developer, so I have to type a lot of emails to clients. And so oftentimes, it's exactly the same thing. And because this is an email, it takes a little bit longer. So hopefully, it'll still come up. Nope, this one doesn't want to come up. So I've, I've had problems with this particular one. So I'll just use TextPander because it's the same deal. Here's my entire email from start to finish. Didn't put, my e didn't put my signature in because I do want to customize that a bit because maybe I already know the people, they don't need my full signature, can go with a short one. If I'm being in New Zealand, it's a different one than um, if I'm communicating with somebody in Germany or in the States and so on. So all of that is really brilliant. But what I actually started out with using those tools is to remember our color codes. You might have seen these really nice pillars here in different colors, in orange, yellow, green, and blue, and then some red is there as well. These are our Catalyst colors. And of course, I want to use them working at Catalyst. However, do I remember all of these hex codes? Of course not. 
So what do I do if I do need to write some CSS or some HTML and put a background border in there or a background color? All I can type in Espanto, for example, is yellow. And I get our catalyst yellow. I can type orange, if I can spell it, and orange comes up. And I can even use that in Inkscape. So I want to draw something. And I just noticed that I got the new Inkscape. As you can see on the icons, I chose the non-standard icon pack. And Espanso doesn't quite work there in the color code. So I switched back to Text Ponder because it does work again. So might as well use it. And there my shortcuts are slightly different because I want to order them and not just have black, yellow, and so on, because here you actually have to select them. And if you have a spelling mistake, then you can't find your abbreviation. And so that's why here all my colors start with catalyst, whereas if I have to type the whole thing, that's a bit too much for me. So here I selected green, and my square is in green. Perfectly matches the pillars. Thank you, Grant. Yes, it does. And it is just brilliant. And what I can also do is I can add an abbreviation in the Espanso YAML file. Yeah, it's a YAML file for oh, put in there by text ponder. Coming full circle. And Espanso is really, really super easy. As you can see here, um, it's a YAML file. Didn't know what it was, but the documentation on the website is really nice, makes it very easy for, to understand, because really you only need two lines, a trigger line and then a replace line. And the trigger always needs to include a command, and they recommend to use the colon, because which word starts with a colon already, right? And so you have a colon, and then your short word that you want to use. The thing with Espanso is, of course, you need to remember those words. So if you have 200 or 300 of them, then they better follow a certain pattern, or otherwise you might need to lock them up in there. So that's kind of the drawback for Espanso. And you can't just have really short words either because if I had that, but I wanted to write um, my abbreviation welcome, so if I want to type welcome, then it doesn't work because it immediately finds the colon first letter. Oh, I found the first letter in abbreviation. Okay, I use that. And so you do need to go a little bit longer. And so what I do for my big blue button URLs that I also never remember and don't want to look up in every single calendar invite that I get, I have a colon, triple B, that gets me into my personal big blue button room. If I have a um, colleague's room, I say a colon, person's name, gives me that URL. And then I have colon access and that name. And then I have the access code for Big Blue Button. So I don't need to copy and paste and look things up all the time, which just costs me a lot of time. But of course, when you have back-to-back -back meetings, always starting on the dot and you finish on the dot, it's really hard because you simply don't have the time to wait until your email software is launched and then you go into the calendar. It takes a few seconds until the calendar event is there. You have to click on it, then you have to click the URL and the ex uh, access code and all of that. It's just a bit too long. So whereas here, after four keyboard strokes, it's done. And so with kind of Espanso, we've seen YAML file, really dead easy. If you open it in um, Atom, for example, you also get the colorization for the, for the hex code. So you can just double check, is it correct or not? You can put comments in, so you do your normal stuff. And um, if you're looking for my worms details, then you saw that I had paragraphs in there. And because it's a YAML file, everything needs to be on a single line, I learned. Um, you do have to put in line breaks and paragraph breaks, but it wasn't too hard. 
um, and it was all really nicely documented. Now, on the other hand, if you use TextPander, it's, it's a bit easier because you don't have to remember so much. Since all you do is you pull up your, your menu. Unfortunately, I can't make that bigger for you. Um, and then you start typing. So that is where all my signatures are coming from. They are all starting with sign so that I can then scroll through and rem remind myself, okay, which one is it actually? Um, however, if for some reason I misspell sign, then it doesn't find anything and I can't go up and down with the keyboard, uh, with, the, uh, with the cursor and therefore do need to type something correct in there. And so sometimes Espanto is just much, much faster because in this case, because I always misspell my name, um, I just type colon K, even lowercase K, and it just does the right thing. But it also means I can really only type on my computer because nobody else has that keyboard shortcut. <laughs> um, that's kind of the drawback of when you customize your, your environment, uh, which you oftentimes probably also know when you use a very specific Windows manager or have keyboard shortcuts or have your bash aliases and all of that. They work perfectly fine as long as you're always on exactly that same computer. However, if you go to some place else, suddenly everything takes 10 times longer. But yeah. Those are the two software programs that I wanted to show to you today. Um, because maybe you want to start using them. They are not just for non-developers, they are for developers as well. And my team now, um, instead of using bash aliases, people have started using Espanso to kind of write regularly used commands like how to run the cron um, without needing to go into the recursive search um, or re reverse, reverse search. And um, TextPanda does exist also on Mac and Windows, not just on, uh, sorry, Espanso exists also on Mac and um, Windows, whereas TextPanda, I think, is really more of a Linux tool. And you do need to install a few libraries, but that is explained very nicely here. Also, how to set a shortcut and how to do the keyboard shortcut. And the important thing with TextPanda is restart your computer before you try using it. Because only then will it actually start working. So that, that took a while to kind of figure that out. But um, after we installed TextPanda on a couple of uh, colleagues' computers, it, I don't forget about that anymore. So now you have three different tools. Auto key, watch the recording of the lightning talk if you want uh, to use that. Auto key, of course, is kind of more of the Rolls Royce of the auto generating text thingies because it also does scripts and a whole lot of other things that I don't even know because I don't need them since I really only want to have text repl replacement. And if you're something like me, you want something really simple that just works and don't have to worry about having a lot of RAM and running it in, in the background. <coughs> Sorry, then you might want to look into Espanso and or TextPander. They're really neat. And um, I think I've been using those text automation tools now since about uh, 2012. And so I've saved a lot of time in my work day <laughs> doing kind of all those trivial and manual things that, that don't really should be taking a lot of time. Thank you. <laughs>